Dear shareholders, I wish you a very warm welcome to the Fresenius Annual General Meeting. Last year, I opened my speech with the words, these are extraordinary times. That applies to the entire world, but that also applies to us as a company. What I did not expect was that these words would once again still apply today, maybe even more so than one year ago. There's a war in Europe, only one day's drive away from our headquarters. It is a war of aggression provoked by the Russian leadership, which I strongly condemn. As a healthcare company, Fresenius fights to save lives. Putin's army is fighting to destroy an entire country with a contempt for people and a brutality that appalls me. On the other hand, I am very proud of the truly heroic performance of our employees in Ukraine. Until the war began, our business in the country included three dialysis centers. Chronic kidney disease patients received life-saving dialysis there. For weeks, our employees kept these clinics going, despite the worsening situation, despite the fiercer bombardments, despite the constant worry about the safety of their families and their own lives, because they realized that giving up may well have meant the death of our patients. Our clinic in Kharkiv now lies in ruins. We succeeded in moving its patients and those of the Chernihiv clinic together with their families to relative safety. Uh, this was very heartening news amid all of the suffering. In the meantime, we've even been able to reopen the clinic in Chernihiv. At the same time, our colleagues are working tirelessly to get urgently needed medicines, blood supplies, and other medical products into the country, despite the increasingly complicated logistics involved. These and many similar stories that I've heard have moved me deeply. They also make me extremely angry, angry at Vladimir Putin and angry at a system that would tolerate such barbaric warmongering. Yet, Fresenius is, continues to be active in Russia, and as things stand now, we will remain so, because that, too, is part of our responsibility as a healthcare company. We operate some 100 dialysis clinics in Russia, and we provide hospitals and other health care facilities with important medicines and clinical nutrition products. We cannot simply abandon our patients there, even in light of the atrocities in Butcha and other places. We have to continue to provide them with medical care. It is very easy to shut down a fast food restaurant, but not a dialysis center. If Fresenius produced consumer goods, we would immediately have pulled out of Russia. But we are a healthcare company. Many of our products and services are essential for life, uh, life saving, in fact. Our patients depend on these products and services, even in Russia. There aren't any substitutes available, at least not in the short term. And even though it is Russian soldiers who are fighting and killing in Ukraine, we cannot and must not set human lives against each other. That would rob us of our own humanity. We have a special duty to protect the lives and health of our patients, all of our patients. We cannot simply refuse them life-saving treatments and coldly stand aside and allow them to die. This is especially true for our doctors who have sworn an oath to protect human life. I can assure you there are no financial incentives for us to continue caring for our patients in Russia. 
At this point in time and in the foreseeable future, we will not be earning any money whatsoever. And of course, the Russia of today is not a market in which we can expand. We have put all of our investments there on ice. And in Russia, we will continue to only provide what our patients urgently need in Russia. In the first quarter of this year, the war had an adverse effect of 14 million euros on our net income, which we reported in our financial statement as a special item. I do not want to speculate on any additional effects, but of course we will be monitoring the developments very closely. I fervently hope that the Russian leadership will come to its senses. The fighting and killing, unnecessary killing in Ukraine must stop immediately. Vladimir Putin has this in his power, and with all my heart, I wish for an end to the violence in this region and a lasting peace. However, the war in Ukraine was not the only challenge we are facing. The pandemic remains a burdensome factor for all of us personally, for you, for me, even the way in which we must hold our annual general meeting, again in a purely for virtual format for the third year in a row. And as a healthcare company, we are especially affected by the pandemic. As I've already said, we are, fight for, we are fighting for lives. Never has this fight been as hard as during the coronavirus pandemic. However, we have done our part, played our role, and lived up to our responsibility. Also, in the year just ended, we set up special isolated units where infected patients could continue to receive their dialysis treatments. We treated more than 42,000 COVID-19 patients in our hospitals. In total, we vaccinated well over 1 million people against the virus. And again, we did all we could to main our ability to deliver crucial medicines and medical products even as the demand for some of them rose substantially, and to provide follow-up treatment. We developed a special program for post-COVID rehabilitation at Fresenius Vomit. This sounds like additional business sales or profits, but it only sounds like that. In reality, the pandemic continues to impose a heavy burden on our business. An important and very sad aspect is the excess mortality among our dialysis patients. Chronic kidney disease patients are especially vulnerable to the disease. Last year, significantly more dialysis patients died than would otherwise have been the case. Above all, this is a human tragedy, but it also has an impact on our business. Treatment volumes are declining, resulting in lower sales while costs continue to rise. And this applies to Fresenius Helios, but also to the rehab facilities uh, that Fresenius Vomit has. Concurrently, we had higher costs for additional hygiene measures. And it is also true that fewer treatments and fewer operations have translated into less demand for many of Fresenius the Kabi products. And Fresenius Vomit's project business was also impaired due to pandemic travel restrictions and due to the hesitation and uncertainty of many clients. Nevertheless, we achieved a lot in 2021, and we made some key decisions. One of them, Fresenius Medical Care's FME 25 transformation program. This will significantly simplify the company's global structure, which in the future will comprise only two global segments. In the care enablement segment, Fresen Fresenius Medical Care is consolidating its previously decentralized product business under a one global medical technology umbrella. The global healthcare services business will be combined in the care delivery segment. This will make our company more agile and allow us to make better use of our existing know-how. It will accelerate innovation and deploy capital in an even more efficient manner. 
At CABI, we have also defined a new strategy called Vision 2026. This is the guideline to transforming the company for the next decade. Going forward, we are going to focus on three growth paths. First, broadening our biopharmaceutical offering, more launches of clinical nutrition products, and the expansion in the field of medical technology. The foundation for this is our volume-driven business in infusions and liquid pharmaceuticals. Here, we aim to strengthen our resilience. And we have come up with a very simple formula called 3.1. Another milestone, despite the pandemic, is a record order backlog at Fresenius Vomit. And at Fresenius Helios, we again made some very attractive acquisitions. First of all, in Germany, where we acquired a, 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 a German Red Cross hospital in Kassel, and not far away in Warburg, there is already an existing Helios hospital. So in addition to the second German Red Cross hospital, we will be forming a regional medical network, and this will be expanded over the next few years completely in line with our cluster strategy. And in Colombia, we also acquired an oncological center and an eye clinic. And then, even though this was early this year, we also acquired a majority stake in another fertility center in the United States. As a result, we are strengthening our new business, the Eugene Group. With regard to all of our successes, I want to stress once again, 2021 was anything but an easy year. This applies to our company, but especially to our employees. Protective clothing and masks and tests, quarantine, filling in for colleagues and special shifts, home office alongside homeschooling, um, video conferences that seemed endless and worries. This was an awful lot, but our employees were always there. They kept going, and they are still going for our patients, for our customers, and for Fresenius. Without them, it, this could not have worked. And for all that, I can only say thank you. Our workforce expanded once again in 21, and yes, we have launched cost reduction measures to increase our efficiency. However, that doesn't really seem to indicate growth in staff, but at Fresenius Medical Care, we have concrete plans for the reduction of 5,000 full-time equivalents. That was and is a very painful decision, but a necessary one, because it's all about making accelerated growth possible in other areas, to be able to do even more for our patients and for even more patients as well. At this juncture, I would like to talk about two impending changes on the management board, as already mentioned by Mr. Kirsch. The first involves my valued colleague, Rhys Powell, CEO of Fresenius Medical Care. He will turn 67 this year. Our age limit for management board members is 65. Therefore, Rhys will complete his contract, which ends on December 31st. Then, after 25 successful years at Fresenius Medical Care, he will commence his well-earned retirement. And I'm very pleased to be able to report that we have found an outstanding successor, and quite early as well, Dr. Carla Krivet. Until the end of April, she was CEO at BSH House Geräte GmbH. And I'm certain that together with the entire management team, she will lead Fresenius Medical Care into a successful future. Regretfully, we are also losing another highly valued colleague. She is sitting here next to me. Rachel Empey, our Chief Financial Officer, for personal reasons, and she has decided to leave Fresenius this summer after some intense and challenging years. I'll be sorry to see her go. Of course, I respect her decision. Here, too, we have found an outstanding successor from our own ranks, Sarah Henneken. She currently heads our Global Treasury and Corporate Finance Department, 
and has worked closely with Rachel over the last few years. Although both of them will still be giving us their best for some months yet, I am already very grateful for everything that Reese and Rachel have done for Fresenius. And at the same time, I wish all of them the best. At the same time, I'm very much looking forward to working with my two new management board colleagues. We are and will remain a strong team. Dear shareholders, we come to our business results for 2021. Under the circumstances, it was an okay year for us, a decent year. We were able to increase sales by 5% at constant currency. Unfortunately, EBIT declined. At constant currency, it fell by 6%. This was due mainly due to the already mentioned COVID-19 burdens at Fresenius Medical Care. Nonetheless, we were again able to increase our net income by 5% at constant currency. In the fourth quarter, we turned in a very strong final support. And therefore, I can happily say we have met all of our announced targets for 2021, even though we raised our outlook twice during the year. You can see that we are continuing to work on rebuilding capital market confidence in us as a reliable, high-growth company. And this brings me to our dividend proposal for 2021. We, because we want you, dear shareholders, to once again participate in our success this year. And therefore, we are proposing a 5% dividend increase to 92 cents per share. This would be our 29th consecutive dividend uh, in series. For the first time, we would also like to offer a script dividend. That is, you, dear shareholders, are allowed to have the choice, a choice of receiving your dividend in cash or in the form of new shares. The latter is a very simple way of reinvesting your dividend directly in our company. The Elsa Krona Fresenius Foundation has informed us that it would like to wholly opt for the script dividend, which is a strong signal of support, I believe, uh, which makes me very happy. Another premier, we have set a climate goal for the Fresenius Group for the first time. We want to reduce both our direct and indirect greenhouse gas emissions by half by 2030. As measured from roughly 1.5 million metric tons in 2020, by 2040 at the latest, we want to be climate neutral. In this, we are guided by the scientific target set at the Paris Agreement and its goal to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. How do we intend to achieve this ambitious goal? The key for the first few years will be to switch our consumption of electricity to renewable energy. In addition to this, we'll of course continue to work on making our hospitals, clinics, and production sites ever more energy efficient. We will also look at every investment from a so-called green perspective. And where it is economically and ecologically feasible, we will install more renewable energy, energy generation capacity at all our sites. So let's talk about our vision for the future. This time, our 2022 financial guidance and medium-term targets. As stated earlier, the COVID-19 pan pandemic remains a burdensome factor. Just how much demands, among other things, on the further, further progress of vaccinations in our important markets. And of course, on whether new and dangerous variants of the virus will emerge. Added to this, there is also the impact of further external factors. First and foremost, the war in Ukraine, supply chain bottlenecks, cost increases, in some cases very substantial cost increases that are not or only partially reflected in reimbursement rates. We have tried to factor all of this into our 2022 forecast to the best of our ability. 
Of course, there will continue to be uncertainties. Nevertheless, we will once again continue to grow this year. Currently, we expect to increase our sales by mid-single-digit percentage on a currency-adjusted basis. And we expect to our net income to increase by a low single-digit percentage at constant currency. Our business development in the first quarter was encouraging. We made a good start into 2022. Fresenius Medical Care and Fresenius Vomit performed in line with our expectations. Fresenius Helios and Kabi performed somewhat better. I therefore expect that we will reach our targets. Uh, I also would like to confirm our medium-term targets for 2020 to 2023, and I want to emphasize that these targets were set in 2019, before the onset of the pandemic. These targets are annual average organic growth in sales of 4 to 7 percent and 5 to 9 percent in net income. We are sticking to these targets. At the same time, we wish to be more precise regarding our expectations. For sales growth, we expect to be at the bottom to middle of the range. And for growth in net income, we will likely reach only the lower end of this range. To achieve even this, we will have to meaningfully accelerate earnings growth in 2023. We are confident of our ability to do so. Our growth strategy as defined last year will help us. You will recall that a year ago, we started down the path to becoming an even stronger healthcare group. So what have we achieved during the first stage of this journey? We have optimized for Zenios. We have made the decisions for accelerated, profitable growth in the coming years. Among other things, we launched an ambitious cost-cutting and efficiency program. We are making good progress, even faster than is originally expected. That means we are saving even more money and sooner than expected. This allowed us to substantially increase our sustainable cost savings target to more than 150 million euros after taxes and minority interest in 2023. After that, we are aiming for even higher sustained savings. We have also put our group structure to the test, open-ended without any taboos. We have analyzed this very carefully. Where do we see the best growth opportunities? How do we want to seize them? And how do we want to finance them? First of all, our broad-based group structure has proved its worth, particularly in difficult times such as these. It has made the growth of the past decades possible. And today, it continues to offer us many advantages, stability through diversification, uh, also due to our size, economies of scale, synergies between business segments, and tax advantages, and of utmost importance, better financing conditions, especially when it comes to borrowing. At the end of the day, dear shareholders, a lower interest rate expense is also a big advantage for you. Another important result of our analysis, we continue to see excellent growth opportunities for all four business segments. All four have strong market positions. Either we are among the leaders in the respective field of that business segment, or for example in dialysis, we are clearly the number one. In all four business segments, we have identified very promising strategic growth areas. And we now want to exploit this potential. We want to promote and actively, actively drive this growth forward. Organic growth was, is, and will remain the basis for us. But beyond that, we also want to take strategic growth steps in the future, specifically by making significant investments, for example, in our digital transformation or the realization of large acquisitions, just as we have re repeatedly and successfully done in the past. At the same time, we want to maintain our investment-grade credit rating that lowers our interest costs and assures us access to the capital market, especially in difficult times like these. A capital increase would only again become an option at a significantly higher share price. And that is why we have to tap new sources of capital and distribute the available capital wisely. And that is why we have analyzed our current setup, i.e., 
our four business segments very closely and have developed a strategy for an optimal capital allocation within the group. In this way, we aim to combine more dynamic growth with the advantages of a diversified structure in an optimal fashion. I would like to present this strategy to you now, briefly. The top priority for capital allocation within the group will be for Zenius Kabi. Why? First of all, in comparison of all four business segments, we see for Zenius Kabi as having the best overall growth prospects and the best uh, profile of return on our investment. Our program called Vision 2026 strategy will make a significant contribution here. Se secondly, unlike Fresenius Medical Care and Fresenius Vomit, we are the sole owner of Kabi. Thirdly, while we have primarily expanded our services business in the past, we now want to strengthen, in particular, the product side of Fresenius. And fourthly, uh, Fresenius Kabi's pharmaceutical business is the nucleus of our company, drugs, infusions. That's where we come from. As a listed company, Fresenius Medical Care already largely finances its growth independently. Through its FME transformation program, Fresenius Medical Care will strengthen its long-term profitable growth. In doing so, it will create additional value. And this also applies to our share in the company. Helios and Vomit will continue to be able to finance smaller acquisitions from Fresenius Group Funds. For larger growth, we are now consider bringing in suitable equity investors on board, but not at the level of Fresenius SE and Co. KGAA, but at the level of these business segments. We are already implementing this growth strategy. At the end of March, Kabi launched two important acquisitions. One is a majority stake in, in Map Science, a leading international biopharmaceutical company based in Madrid. Map Science already has two biosimilars that have been launched on the market, and they have a very promising pipeline. This company also operates three state-of-the-art plants for producing biological agents, and this superbly complements our existing manufacturing network. Fresenius Kabi has also taken over Ivenix, a U.S. company. Ivenix has developed a highly innovative infusion system, or pump, that is easier to operate and thus safer than standard pumps. In addition, it works seamlessly with other systems. With these two acquisitions, we are strengthening Kabi's position in two important growth markets. And Fresenius Medical Care also took another important growth step in March. The company is participating in the merger of three partners to become the leading value-based uh, kidney care provider in the United States. Fresenius Medical Care will bring its own division for value-based care in North America to this merger. In addition, uh, we will be adding a leading network of nephrologists in the United States and the operator of a leading patient data platform. The new company will be called Interwell Health, and it will be fully consolidated by Fresenius Medical Care as the majority owner with a valuation of $2.4 billion. Interwell Health has outstanding prospects for significantly improving renal therapy in the United States. Its ambitious goals include reducing hospital stays, slowing the progression of the disease, increasing the number of transplants, speeding the transition to home dialysis, improving the clinical results, and thereby improving the quality of life for our patients, and last but not least, reducing overall costs for the healthcare system. Moreover, Interwell Health will treat uh, chronic kidney diseases long before these patients need dialysis. 
In this way, we can more than triple the potential market volume for Fresenius medical care in the United States from around 50 billion to around 170 billion dollars. So you see, we're not just simply making announcements, we're actually putting them into effect. Our decisions will enable the accelerated growth of each individual business segment and therefore also accelerate the growth for the entire group. We want to move Fresenius ahead at speed. But we also want to a measured and well-managed transformation of our company. Fresenius remains a diversified healthcare group with a sharper profile. We will continue to be active in wide-ranging and very exciting areas of medical care because not only the world finds itself in eventful times, we as a company too are going through turbulent times. We have a number of challenges to overcome, no doubt. But our path is clear. We have set a strategic framework to achieve sustainable and accelerated profitable growth. Our goal is and remains to create added value and benefit for all our stakeholders by doing what we have done best for 110 years providing high-quality medicine at affordable prices and tailored to the needs of more and more people around the world who need medical care. To put it succinctly, ever better medicine for ever more people. We will continue to boldly and steadily progress down this path. So come with us. Thank you very much.